Hey everybody, welcome back to Vanland. Since we put out our first video on the incline water heater, we've gotten a bunch of questions from you guys. So we wanted to shoot another video, answer those questions, and then also give you an idea of what it's actually like to have this heater installed on your van. So this is my van here. I've had the incline heater installed for about four months now, and I've done a bunch of trips. So I just wanted to share my experience with you guys and hopefully give you an idea of what it's actually like to live with this heater. All right, we're gonna start out by taking an initial temperature reading. The van has been sitting here overnight, so all of the water is cold right now. So we're gonna first take a temperature reading and then drive a little bit and see how fast the heater actually warms up the water. All right, so let's start on the inside. Okay, so we'll first take a temperature reading of the water when it's totally cold, and that will give us a baseline so we know um, how much the temperature has gone up after we've driven. I've got this little temperature gauge here. So we're starting out at about 54 degrees. We're gonna start the van, drive down the road, about 10 minutes, I would like to actually check to see how much it's warmed up after just 10 minutes of driving. And then our destination today is about an hour away. So then we'll also take another temperature reading after an hour of driving. And I think at that point, the water should be all the way up to the full temperature. But uh, let's find out for real and um, head out on the road. So we've been driving um, about 10 miles, which took a little under 15 minutes. So I wanted to get a temperature reading just to see in a short drive how much the water has heated up. It definitely feels hot enough to wash your hands or do the dishes. Let's see what the actual temperature is. All right, so it's about 120 degrees, maybe 119. So we went from 54 degrees to almost 120 degrees, which is definitely hot water. Um, in under 15 minutes of driving, um, again, a little bit less than 10 miles. So as you can see, it does heat up really quick. Um, if, even if the water's totally cold and you need hot water, it really doesn't take long at all for it to get up to temperature. All right, so now that we have the short-term temperature gain on it, let's um, finish the drive out. It's about another 30 or 40 minutes to where we're going and then we'll see what the temperature is at that point. After about 45 minutes on the road and a total of maybe 30 miles or so driven, we finally reached our destination, which is this awesome cliff overlooking the ocean. So uh, yeah, let's test the water at this stage and see what the temperature is. And that is really hot. You can see it's steaming. Right, and the temperature now is just under 150 degrees. When you get to 160 degrees, that actually is scalding temperature. And um, based on this being a diesel powered van, um, the engine does not get as hot as it would as if it was a gas van. So it's really important, no matter what, that you do have mixers. You wouldn't want to use this water directly out of the heater. So we have a mixer here on the faucet, of course. Also, all of the showers have mixers. If there is a question about scalding and you're concerned about it, like you have kids in the van with you, for instance, then it's a good idea to put an anti-scald mixer in line so that when it gets to any of the fixtures, it's never going to be above the scalding temperature. Okay, so now that we have an idea of how long it takes to heat up the water, again, it was about 15 minutes on the road, got us up to a, a high enough temperature of water that you would be able to do dishes or take a shower, certainly. And after 45 minutes on the road, it's basically all the way up to its maximum temperature, which is around 150 degrees. Since the incline heater does have 4.2 gallons of water storage at a pretty high temperature, you're able to mix that with cold water and effectively get six to eight gallons of hot water every time the heater goes through one of its heating cycles. Okay, so now that we've figured that out, let's get to some of the questions that you guys had about the incline. So question number one that we get is, can the incline heater be installed on the driver's side or the passenger side? And the answer is yes, it could be installed on either side and there are mounting kits to do it in either one. It requires a different mounting bracket for the driver's side versus the passenger side. I would say probably the best place to mount it where you're less likely to need that space for anything else would be on the passenger side 
right underneath the sliding door. And question number two, does the incline interfere with adding side steps to your van? So if you have a four wheel drive van, especially you're gonna need side steps and the incline does not interfere with most side steps that at least the ones that we use. So I have Rome built side steps on my van with the incline heater and the Rome built has probably more bracketing underneath than pretty much any other side step. And we were able to get the incline and the Rome built steps installed on this van without any issues. The one brand of steps that you would have to take into consideration are the amp power steps. And those are the steps that retract up underneath the vehicle when you close the door and tuck away. So you wouldn't be able to install them with amp steps on the passenger side, but if you move the incline to the driver's side, then typically there's plenty of room to install it with the amp power steps if you use it on the driver's side. And question number three, can the incline be installed inside the van? While technically there's nothing preventing you from installing it on the inside of the van, I personally don't think it's a very good idea. You have extremely hot water and also extremely hot coolant fluid, both of which are flowing through the heater. And if there were to be any problem, you definitely don't want either of those fluids leaking into the van, especially the coolant, which is pretty nasty stuff. If you would have a leak inside the van, it would take a lot to clean it up. So my recommendation and the design of the unit is to be installed underneath the van, and that is definitely the best place to install it. All right, and the fourth question, and this is probably the most common question we get, is how does it operate during winter? Can you use it when the temperatures outside are freezing? And I have personal experience with this just recently. You can definitely use the incline heater even if it's freezing cold outside. The water inside the tank, if you're driving at all during the day, will get very hot. And since it's an insulated tank, it's very unlikely that the tank would ever freeze if you're doing a little bit of driving every day. But if you are in a situation where you're gonna be parked for multiple days and not using the van, that's where the 12 volt heating element comes in. You would want to set the heating element to at least the minimum temperature, which is 50 degrees. So anytime the water in the tank gets below 50, the heating element will come on and keep it up to temperature that definitely would not freeze. Of course, if you're parked for multiple days and you have shore power, then you would wanna turn on the heating element and crank the heat all the way up to at least probably 120 degrees. And that will give you basically unlimited hot water and eliminate the possibility of it freezing whatsoever. So I did a trip recently. We spent seven days in Park City skiing and we were parked right outside of a condo that our family had rented. Um, we were using the van, but definitely not moving it on a daily basis. So all I did was set the temperature to 50 degrees. Um, it does consume a little bit of battery power, of course, to keep the water temperature up. But even though it was freezing every night down into the teens or 20s, we had no issues with um, the tank freezing at all. I will say as a word of warning, anytime you have a water system in a van and you're not using the van, meaning that you cannot keep the temperature inside the van up, then you should really be draining your entire water system. Unless you've designed it in such a way that the pipes are insulated and heated and the fresh water and gray water tank are also heated in some way, then just like any other RV, you need to be draining the water out because if you have leaks, due to freezing and cracking. It's just gonna be a big issue. And so um, vans are just like any other RV. When you're not using it and it's freezing cold, it should be emptied of all the water. Here I am under the van, and that's the heater mounted up underneath. This is the heating element, it's 12 volts, and it has a thermostat control on here. So I don't, use it that often to heat the water um, unless I'm in really cold weather. So this was just recently set to the lowest temperature, which is about 50 or 60 degrees, just to keep it from freezing while we were doing some skiing. But now I actually want to heat the water, so I'm going to turn it up to like 130 degrees. Okay. And this is a 200 watt element, so it, it does take a while. It's not a fast heating element. Um, it's more designed to draw low wattage over time and just kind of keep up the temperature. 
So I'm about to go surfing and I usually usually surf for about three hours. So um, that, that should have it plenty warm, up to 130 degrees or so when we get back. I'm a big fan of the incline water heater because to me, it's the smartest way to get hot water for your camper. 99% of the time, you're just gonna have hot water without having to think about it, without having to burn through any battery power or having to use propane at all in your van. So if you think about how automotive engineers have designed cabin heating, of course, there's a free source of heat coming off of the engine. So it would be really crazy for, to, to try to develop another system to heat the interior of a van. And it's kind of the same thing with the hot water. If you already have free heat coming off the engine and you can transfer it into the water just through a simple system with no moving parts, it just makes a ton of sense to me. And the unit is really robust. So when we see new vans come through and we put an incline water heater on it, we know that basically for the life of that van, every time the person drives, they're gonna have free hot water. One of the things you may need to do is make slight adjustments to how you use your water. So for instance, it's usually first thing in the morning that the water temperature is gonna be the lowest because it's been sitting overnight, the coldest part of the day, and the van hasn't been running. Generally, it's warm enough in the morning to wash your hands and face and do basic things with warm water, but it's not gonna be extremely hot anymore. So one of the things that we do is when we're out camping, we'll make breakfast and then just put the dishes from breakfast into the sink. And then once we do our first drive of the day, again, even after we've only driven about 10 to 30 minutes, then we'll stop and do the dishes at that point when there's plenty of hot water. And then once we get on the road again, that water heats right back up to temperature. So if you're willing to make slight adjustments to the way that you use your hot water and when you need to use it, then basically you don't really have to worry about ever heating water with this unit, which is the reason I think it's so cool. So if you wanna know how to install the incline water heater, we did a full video step-by-step -step showing you how to install it. And if you have a question that we didn't answer in the video, please leave it in the comments. Uh, we'll go ahead and make another video if there's enough additional questions about it. If you wanna purchase the unit, the link is in the description. You can get it on our website. And of course, if you have any other questions or need help, you can always give us a call, reach out to us. We would be happy to connect with you guys. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you guys again next time.